Yeah. Um, and you started your apprenticeship here? No, no, no. I started tattooing in Scotland. Okay. And it's weird. I, I never actually wanted to tattoo. Your last podcast, the first thing I thought was, are they not those little ice creams from which? They are the <laughs> most. See, everyone says yeah. this. Del said this as well, yeah. And there's no, like, big regrets, because anything that's gone wrong, I'm really grateful for. <laughs> Red Stripe sponsor me. Red Stripe sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I got a bottle of whiskey in the back as well. We cracked that open too. Happy days. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Alex Lloyd, and this is a 21st century tattoo. Lewis, thank you for having us today, bro. Thank it's you, nice mate. to be down thank here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, it's good. Love the studio, man. Thank you, man. Um, let's get started with the first question from the guest from previously. Um, okay, we might as well go straight in with that. <laughs> no time wasting. No time wasting. And then we can ease it in after okay, that. Okay, okay, Right, so the last guest left a question. That you I don't sat- know the question. You don't know the question. I, 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 I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> you sat at a dinner table, three celebrities, dead or alive. Who's it going to be? Matthew McConaughey. Easy, because yeah. I'd have so many questions to ask him. Sean Connery, because he's a Scottish legend. And... I'd probably say Peggy Goo because she's at my. Oh, you're out, like, are you oh, into your house? Yeah. I'm into house, but not only that, her fashion sense, and I just love her. Uh, she's yeah. like my dream woman, mate. Have you seen her live? No, I've not. No, I, I need, to, I need to as well. She, <laughs> re- she's smashing mate, it. Mate, she's beautiful. Yeah, like, she's crazy good. And I love what she wears. Her fashion sense is quality. Yeah. <sighs> to be fair, it was something I noticed about you as well. You kind of, the way you dress is a little yeah. bit different. You yeah. kind of got that like smart, but. Ath- like athletic look. Yeah, I try to mix it up. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's nice to kind of push your boundaries. I think like fashion's an art form as well. Do you know what I mean? It all kind of links into one, doesn't it? One hundred percent. It's nice to just I just wear whatever I want. I don't mind, you know. Mm. What's the mix. inspiration for for that then? As in for what I wear? Mm. Yeah, a lot of different things, mate. To be honest, I mean, I like Tyler. Tyler wears a lot of good things. Tyler yeah. Crayer, ASAP, one of my best mates. He dresses good. Just mixing it up, just pushing the boundaries. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. And yeah, it's nice to just be different, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like maybe pushing the boundaries in fashion. You're definitely pushing the boundaries in tattooing as well. Yeah. One of the reasons why I'm sat sat down yeah, here with yeah. you today. Like, yeah. love what you're doing with yeah. your style. It's kind of on its own, and I'm kind of seeing. Some some bits that are kind of similar, but the way you're doing it is completely unique. So, yeah, it's weird how it came about though, because it's like like we were saying earlier. I used to do massive realism. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like literally full full leg, heavy shading, arm sleeves, literally no skin. Well, you would have your skin gaps obviously to to have the contrast over time, so it would it would last. But it always felt forced to me. Do you know what I mean? So when I moved to England. I was working with boys and they all did a lot of high contrast work. Mm. And with tattooing, I've found that it's, it's very easy to get sucked in when you're surrounded by other people. And they, for instance, I was with, what did I work with? Three boys. They all did high contrast. And then what, realism? Yeah. So I mo- when I moved to England when I was 19, I did like, it was realism, but it was quite faint. And I'd never really got the grasp of saturating the skin. Right. So when I moved to England, I was around these boys all the time and everything I did, it felt so forced. Do you know what I mean? I was like, packing black to me, mate, was my biggest nightmare. Yeah. Because I was like, I was like, oh my days, I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I never really got taught the proper technique. And, and like, for me, I found it a bit tedious. It's tedious, mate. I can't stand it. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? And so I got sucked into that. And then all of a sudden I was getting tattooed by a guy pardon me, in Italy, and he does realistic work. So everyone I was around, they were all doing that kind of high contrast, realistic work. And that's naturally what I got sucked into. Like lent towards, yeah, of course. Yeah, because you're around it and you're easily influenced by people. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then when I moved, so I, I rented a space of my own and I always really enjoyed doing small details and but I never ever got to do it. And it was always like my thing, like I used to draw small, I would tattoo small, but it was just something that wasn't even on the radar to, yeah. to, to actually pursue that. And then to be honest, I think it was in the lockdown 
the first lockdown, when was that? 2020? Mm. Yeah, I was just like mucking around on my iPad and I've always been big into design. Anything design wise, like you know, you look at movie posters or any anything sort of like graphic design wise. Yeah. And I was like, how can we sort of merge all that into one another? And, Bring and, that into. And that's what excites me. Do you know what I mean? It's, you know, I have the utmost respect for black and grey, but there's not really much composition towards it. Mm. So I wanted something that's going to challenge me further. And how can I put loads of different elements into one piece and and create a composition that ultimately has a, has a lot of meaning and, and personal um, value to the client, you know? Yeah. I see on your socials, you kind of talk about creating pieces that focus on telling a story. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, like, when I look at your pieces, like, I feel like there are some artists who will look at your stuff and it will just blow their mind because trying to understand maybe how you get that stuff to work, I guess that would maybe lead me to ask you how you would probably define that style because to me it looks a little bit abstract and surrealist. Yeah, for sure. With obviously the realistic yeah. elements. How do you how do you kind of combine that stuff like to get it to work when the pieces can sometimes on the surface look a little bit random? So the thing is, is say, say for instance, it's all subjective really, isn't it? Because... A client could come with an idea and sometimes they don't even send any images. Yeah. Or they maybe they'll send an image of a tattoo that I've done and they like elements of it. But a lot of the time and this this is why I really enjoy it because it, it's it's it is actually I have to think about it. Do you know what I mean? It's like if they want to create an emotion or if they have an emotion that they want then to put onto skin, mm. how can you visualize that and what is it? So you're constantly, but like I said, it's subjective. It could be interpreted in so many different ways. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and there's no kind of end to it. There's no rules to it either, which is cool. And then with the, the design concept, if they have five things that they want to put into it or multiple, with that use of like fine line, abstract, that's how you can tie all that in. Because if mm. you were doing that and say, um, big black and gray, how could you put 10 things into a black and gray image? Well, you, they just don't, do they? They just can't, really. no. do you know what I mean? It's like they want a portrait of this or they want a, they want an animal portrait or, you know, just your usual bits. If, if you're going to create a composition with black and gray, which is it's weird, I started doing, you need from the thigh to the ankle. Mm. You know what I mean? And you the need, whole way around. You yeah. need that hole or yeah. a back piece. And, mate, I'm not going to lie, I've started multiple back pieces and I've not finished one of them. <laughs> Because it starts and then they're off, like, yeah. I never see them again. No one, yeah, that's what point, annoys like, me. Mate, I'll do it for free if you want. Just yeah. let me finish it. Just to let it, yeah. People, it's the commitment that you don't, I can't stand that when people start mate, projects. It's hard. And I, and the thing is, is I get it, you know, everyone has priorities and, yeah. and you know, you know how it is, mate. If we could, we would probably do this for free. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like what we were saying earlier on the routine. Like, you know, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I'd probably just be like, yeah, who wants to get tattooed? It'd I'll still work. Oh, it. gotcha. Let's do it. I'll do it for free. What do you want? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's the way it is. Yeah, man. It's If you're anything like me, it's expression, it's creativity. We were talking a little bit briefly before we sat down and started recording about like having routine and kind of feeling a little bit like I feel lost when I've not got work. I put a lot of emphasis on my purpose being work. For sure, mate. And I, yeah, I would do it every waking second. You know, and it's a passion and, you know, we put a lot of energy into it. Mm. And I think it's it's visible to other people, do you know what I mean? And that's why people appreciate it. I think it's so nice when clients are like, you can tell when someone's actually grateful for something, you know? Mm. And they can they can see the energy that you've put into it, you know, sitting up at however, like 12 o'clock at night, putting the design together, and you show them they're buzzing, and they get the final piece, and it's like, everyone's happy, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, man. It's beautiful, man. Like, we're we're lucky to do what we do. For sure, like, and people to come to you specifically for Absolutely. your style. Do you kind of, how do you, do you kind of tend to get people coming to you then with some elements that they want to include, but they haven't got any idea? Absolutely. How many yeah. people kind of, do you think, do people have rough ideas sketched up or, or they just go, I oh, listen, I just want you to kind of mash these so, ideas together? Yeah, so they'll send, so there's, I'd say there's like two or three type of clients. You've got like your free reign that just want whatever mm. which to be honest i find hard because like, it is hard my, my, my mind is weird mate and i think of different weird shit that probably people wouldn't think of 
<laughs> do you know what I mean? Like if someone says to me free rent, you're like, do you really want me to do free rent? Yeah. It's like, you ain't got a clue what I'll come up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got a client that will send purely an emotion. Uh-huh. So like say they've they have an experience. I had, no, I'll, tell, I'll give you an example. So I had a client, this was like, I don't know, two years ago maybe, really good client. And um, he wanted it so that, so he, when he goes onto a high edge, he gets the urge to jump. It's nothing like suicide though, or it's nothing to do with that. He just gets his urge that whenever oh, he goes it? onto something. Yeah. There's a French term for it. No, there I is forget. a call. It's called like invasive thoughts, isn't it? I swear. I don't know. Do you know ever get that where like. you're driving on the motorway? Oh, or you're like you're driving on yeah, one yeah. side of the road and then yeah. your brain says, what was if I just like do yeah, that? Yeah, mate, I'll do it car. all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I might just drive it at 100. I just reel the car just, in the same. I'm going to see how long I can shut my eyes before I'm... <laughs> yeah, have you seen King of Staten Island? <laughs> no, I haven't. Oh, mate, you need to watch that. It's a good film. But he does that and then he ends up crushing. Oh, like, right. Well, not him, but like five people behind him. But um, what were we saying again? You know, we're talking about the guy like having that urge to jump. Yeah, so he had this urge to jump, but it, like I said, it's not suicidal. It's nothing like that. It's just like inside, whenever he goes to a high point mm. or a tower or whatever, he feels this urge to jump. So we created a whole piece around that. So with that, obviously, it's purely an emotion. There's no, he he, he gave me no um, imagery to base it off, which I love. Is, yeah, is that enough for you then? It's hard though. Okay, that's it's hard. Okay, fine. Do you know what I mean? It is hard, but you know that's the beauty of it. At the end of the day, if we're not doing it to challenge ourselves, then why are we doing it at all? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're not going to say nah, it's not for me. Nah. It's too hard. Too Mate, I, I'm I'm up for a challenge all yeah. the time, whether it be with tattooing or anything. But um, and then the other client I'd say would be someone they, who gives you lots of elements. Someone that gives lots of elements, and they're very descriptive on what points they want to put in there. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So they might, they're like, oh, I want to, I don't know, you know, Vitruvian man, you know, like the Da Vinci. I don't really do much of the, I don't do any of the Da Vinci stuff anymore. The classical stuff, no? Yeah, I do love it, but it's like, for me, I'm, people say I'm a deep person. I don't think I am, but I like <laughs> when, when it's based on an emotion, Okay. it's like, it, it could be, you know, you could interpret in any different way. When mm. it's like a straight image of something, it's like, how can... How can I really change that? What, like a turtle or something? Like? Yeah, just anything, you know, because it's like, what, this is why I... I don't I know why, why so the word turtle came out. A turtle? Why a turtle? Because I posted a turtle the other day. Maybe that's what it was. So, yeah, you thought, I've like, been looking at your stuff too much. I there posted a turtle the other day, like I healed one, and that's just sat in your head. That's it, rent but free. Like that, like, I do love that because it's like, it's a turtle, I put my spin on it, mm. and it is what it is, but it's like, the stuff that really gets me excited is like, well, you know, it could, you know, whatever you're feeling. I designed the night before, by the way. Do you do the same? I do it on the day. You do it on the day? Mm, I do it on the day. Right. Mm. I'm too stressed. I'm too stressful for that. Yeah, but I, I kind of, so I spent so long drawing in my free time and I almost kind of, if I gave myself too long to draw, I would like never finish anything. I would start it and I'd be like, I didn't like it. You know the beauty of that is though, mate, is like, you can come back to it in kind of fresh eyes. That, and... but, you know, I don't care if someone's a labourer or a or a carpenter or this, that, and the next thing. Two minds are better than one, do you know what I mean? Mm. I've had clients that they don't have a creative bone in their body, but they'll say something to me and I'm like, mate, let's do that. That's yeah, great. it does. And, like, but the thing I is, you pick that. up on them. You look at their, I look at their style. I look at the way they hold themselves and what they I look should. like. Maybe look at other work that they've got in their body and like instantly then I understand Absolutely. what kind of person they are and I can kind of, we vibe off each Absolutely. other. And then I'm like, I un- you know what I mean? You two, do Two minds are better than one. Yeah, you know I mean? and then oh, you can shoot oh, some oh, ideas. They'll say, absolutely not. Yeah. But obviously in doing that, you have to be able yeah. to draw quickly and confidently. Yeah. And like, I do perform a little bit better under stress. You for do. sure. Pressure is a privilege, isn't it? So. 100%. However, big projects, if I'm, which I'm not doing as much of now, then obviously I would draw yeah, them up yeah. over the seri- of yeah, series yeah, of yeah. evenings. Yeah. But for like smaller pieces, I just do it on a day yeah. because I can do it quickly and, yeah. and I can tattoo. Like The beauty is, is everyone has their own methods in it and what works for you works for you. Yeah, 100%. You, you just kind of... And it is, does differ day to day. Some, do you ever find you kind of... How do you deal with maybe a creative block then? So say you've kind of been given these, say you've got like a, a week of projects and you're like, I'm just not there mentally. What do you do? 
just don't be too hard on myself, mate. I think, like, me as a person, whether it be, you know, my actual personal life and work, as long as I acknowledge it, yeah, I'm fine. Like, I used to fight against my head and I'd be like, oh, why is it not working and fight against myself? But it's like, listen, we all go through creative blocks. Do you know what I mean? So just get over it. It's like, it's funny, I was on, I was on FaceTime to one of my good mates, Damien, the other day. Mm. And we were talking about it. And I'm, I'm, to be honest, I would say, I hope my clients are not listening, but to this, when they do <laughs> listen, I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm in one now. But the beauty with tattooing is, is like, you know, when you have those weeks, mate, and you're churning it out, yeah. and it's like the pieces are banging, the photography's banging, you're excited, yeah. everything's just clicking. It's just like that, though. Isn't See it? what I'm always thinking? I'm like, enjoy this because in two, three, a month's time, you're gonna be in a in a struggle. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what that's why I get quite addicted to this because it's like I know in one month time nothing's gonna flow for me. My designs I'm not gonna be happy with, I'm gonna be fighting with it, I'm gonna be tired, yeah, I'm gonna be stressed. And it's like that's what you know, I like that feeling of like being at the bottom. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like it's a constant chase against myself, you know? Yeah, man. To be able to have that self-awareness and understand that that's how you feel is quite crazy. Where where do you find that mental resilience then? Where does that come from? Like to be able to to look at that situation and say, you know what I mean? I can kind of keep my head and, and keep strong through, through a situation like that. Because it can't be easy. There are people who will just give up. Mate, I'm, yeah, I'm not. Or, I'm never going to be one up. of those people. Do you know what I mean? Like I... I love the sort of struggle to everything, do you know what I mean? Whether it be business, you know, you and I, we both have studios, mm. other things going on on the side. It's like, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't mind it. I, I, in fact, I feed off it, to be honest. Mm. Like, I like that feeling, you know, I, yeah, I love it. I love it. And it's like, you know, the the bad, bad's always going to come with good. Good's always going to come with bad, you know what I mean? You just need to deal with it and get on with it and, yeah, man. You know? 100%. I guess we've actually got so, like, into it there. I don't think... I want to kind of maybe take... Let's take it back Wait, to where... This will be the deepest podcast It's you great, bro. I love it. It's good. It's good, man. Because I feel let's like... let's not even talk about tattooing. We, yeah, we can literally get on a mad one. Um, so your style then... What we what we say and how are we defining Fine that? Fine line conceptual realism. Okay. Yeah. Conceptual. So that's conceptual, it. That's the key, yeah. isn't it? Is the concept. Yeah, because because of my realism background, I bring elements into that. I always like doing fine line. I use a one round liner, mainly a tight free. To mm. me, I was saying to one of the boys every day, I was like, a tight free, like I could do anything with a tight free. Man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I could do, I could do a full arm with a tight free. I could do a portrait with a tight free. I love it. I think it's the best needle there is. So versatile. You get more stability than a one, and obviously the shading. Yeah, like you, I yeah. don't, do you ever try? Do you ever shade with a single? I do a little bit, mate. But as you know, it cuts the skin a little bit. And mate, with the with the point two fives, are you know the quadrant, the PMU, the is that what you use? Yeah, I do use them. To be honest with me, I've, I'm not going to lie, I've used everything and yeah. I do use everything. See, like, I rate like, them. I actually I actually started using them after I spoke to Mike Stout and yeah. he gave me one to try. Nice. And I think uh, that was a... 0.25? I think it was a 0.3. 0.3. 0.33 3 Quadrant PMU. Okay. They're like 35 quid a box and they are not as good... As the Ghost? No, as Magic Moons. Magic Moons? For I me... Did you talk about the Magic Moons, you know? I'm not going to lie... Magic Moon sponsor Mate, me. But like, yeah, Magic, sponsor. <laughs> Magic Moon, I love sponsor. When you said Magic Moon in your last podcast, the first thing I thought was, are they not those little ice creams from Waitrose? They are the <laughs> most... See, everyone says yeah. this. Delph said this as well, yeah. But do not select them off until you've tried them because they are... Those guys have been in the game for so long and I use them and they, for me... Do you me, know the little ice creams that I'm talking about? I think I know. Oh, mock, the Mocky Moons. Them. No, they're not Mocky Moons, are they? They're called Magic, the Magic Moons. Moons. The Magic Moons, yeah. They're like the little, little Japanese... 70 calorie That's ice it. creams, yeah, mate. Yeah, they're good, yeah. they are. They are very if we good. get sponsorship for either of them, we're happy. Pist man. Yeah, the pistachio ones. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. My favorite, mate. Pistachio is good. I'm Coconut. a pistachio connoisseur. I've got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any type of pistachio, I'll have. I all love day. it. I love it. But yeah, magic try them. Moon needles. Try magic them. magic mate, moon needles. I've not even seen them. Their point two five threes for me are better. I should have brought a box. Those, they're miles better. Well, mate, I'm gonna go get some. Or more. as good. Yeah. For me. I feel like the sharper for lining. Do you not think with needles or mate, it's like 
I switch all the time because like, see in my head, if I use like a 0.25 quadrant PMU, yeah, yeah. and I used to use a 0.25 Cheyenne, I'm like, oh yeah, the Cheyenne's sharper. But then if I go back to the other one and then like, I have to keep changing because in my head, I'm like, yeah, these I'm are sharper. I'm getting used to it now. Yeah, I'm getting on. used to it, I'm getting comfortable. Yeah. Like they're sat not right, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've seen you. I've seen you use a lot of like smaller mags as well. They're I Cheyenne. use a five mag. Five, five Cheyenne. Mag. Yeah, Cheyenne five mag. The Cheyenne mags to me are the all time. I've used Quadrant. I don't mind them. I've used Da Vinci. Da Vinci anything's good. Yeah. Bishop anything's good, man. Apart from their customer service. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, really? I've had a machine. Oh, I've had a machine backwards and forwards to them no for like way. two months. No way. Yeah, Mate, Franco I bought and all them are sound. I know, I know, should... and I love, I love their machines. I love their needles. I love the Inkies range. I love all of that stuff. Those guys are absolutely smashing it. However, the they customers, are the are, I think it's just guys. because they're so busy. I think, and I think that's it. US, they're just so, they're so US, busy, isn't it? Yeah. But mate, like, if you look at him at what he's done, it's like... Yeah, smash to it. To me, he's, like, an icon, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the guy's tattooed for how many years? Mm. You know, he's come in, he's built the best rotaries there is, in my opinion. I have one tattooed of me, so I've got to say that. And... Oh, in, yeah, I'm going to ask you about that. Inkies, needles, like, you know, what, what else can he do? Do you know what I mean? And he's still out there fucking... Can we swear? No. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If I'm, he's still out there grafting like anything, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I do like all those kind of guys. I'm, you know, I love tattooing, but I'm, I get really excited by the the entrepreneurs within tattooing. Mm. The boys that are there just doing this, that, and the next thing. And you know, these boys are like fifty odd, mate. Yeah. You know, and they're still out there just grafting away. Yeah. You probably don't need to work. Do you know what I mean? Like. I'm all about pioneers and people trying to mate, push love push the industry. Like I guess it's kind of. I'm not saying I'm trying to be a pioneer, but like I I wanna kind of do something different with the podcast and kind of get other artists to out there, you know what I mean? Especially to Man, I think it's brilliant what you're doing, you know. And to see Pete thank you, bro. To see people kind of doing that, especially someone like Franco Vescovi as well. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not like the the stuff that they've managed to achieve is just absolutely incredible. Like I use ones, that's all I use is a bishop wand. I've got every single one. You've got every single I, one, and I've got a phantom, <laughs> and I'm like, a, I'm a fanboy, bro. That. Yeah, do you like I'm, the liner? Love the liner, although what? it's probably too powerful for the sort of stuff that I do now. See, I used it. One of the the boys at the studio, Joe, he does like beautiful single needle fine line with the liner. With the liner, and he runs it quite low though, mate. His work is amazing, and he let me use his every day. You can and, feel it. Feels like it's. And I was like. like yeah, I'm gonna kill someone with this. <laughs> now it was good though. I did that, and the, he has a small battery pack, and I think it comes with a big one. Um, two, or it depends. You got the. I mean, I've got the critical has, battery. He has like a whole little box set up, mate. It's it's awesome. But I use the wand mm. with a critical pack, probably similar to you. Yeah. So it's got which one? Packer, shader, liner. Shader. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's grey shader the lower yeah, yeah, one yeah, 3.5 yeah. 3.5 yeah. 3. mil um, you know but I'm never really lining this might sound ridiculous but I'll double line with a free I don't like using five liners mate no is there anything bigger than that for like nah, any nah. Like... I use a fr I use a free 0.25 5 mag bug yeah. pin I think it's a bug pin Cheyenne that might not be a broken, and then maybe a one if Fine. I'm doing like something tiny. Yeah. But you know, I um over the years I've just like cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. I used to set up with like seventy needles probably. Yeah. And then had a an an, an ink pile at the length of the bloody table, you know. But now I just use black, black three quarter, half. four drop, one drop. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. do that. Black three quarter, half quarter. So very, very yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, really and similar. And then just di I've always diluted it with distilled water. I've always made my own. Do you just dynamic dilute then? Just dynamic, mate, yeah. And just dilute yeah, it. Do you use the... No, so, mates, I, I was originally taught by a very traditional okay. artist. Yeah, I had yeah. a very traditional apprenticeship, learned on core machines. She'd oh, been doing it about hard. 30 years. God. All like Sailor Jerry vibe. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. sort of stuff. It was like, smash it up to like... 12, 13 volts, ride the tube and just bang it in. That was what I was originally taught. Like, I've done some on myself, like, kind of, and to be fair, it's not gone anywhere. 
Yeah, you go but then there. as it kind of like yeah, as you progress, you kind of yeah, learn yeah. little bits and then start hanging it out and all of that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, How do you do it now? Because yeah, obviously you do out. very much fine lines. Hang so it out and like, run, it, run it a lot slower and yeah, kind of. Yeah, I thought so. Can I finesse it a little bit? Yeah, man. You know that. You know it. it like you realise that there is a way of getting the ink into the skin without being like traumatic and like. That's tra- it, mate. You know, we don't. That's why it heals good. Yeah. I get questions all the time. I'm sure you do too. Excuse me, mate. Um, how are those fine lines going to heal in five years? I'll, oh, just send, I'll just send. I'll just send them. There's a. I've done a. You got a healed folder. I've yeah. done a, I have a healed folder. Yeah, but I have. There's a one of my uh, boys in here, Jamie. He does amazing work too. I did this piece on him, and I think I don't know if it's because he's with me all the time. He took extremely good care of it, but. Biome, it's like my best piece. It's probably one of my favorite pieces because it's very meaningful to him and it's healed phenomenal. So someone messaged me the other day like, mate, mate, no, they actually commented on one of my things. I was like, oh, how's that heal over time? So I sent him a video of my of Jamie's arm and I'm like rubbing it up and I'm slapping it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, look at that, lad. Like, there you go. There you go, it's fucking flawless. Yeah. But it's all about the way it's done. And the, obviously partly about the way it's looked yeah, after, of course. Sure, but I but think... that being said, I think some skin, well, you know how it is. Every every canvas is different, mate. Completely you know different. I mean? Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. we do it day in, day out, albeit we're, we're humans, mate, and we're not, we're going to make mistakes at times. We're going to maybe overwork a little something. You know, that's a part of yeah. life, isn't it? But, you know, we do it day in, day out. So it's like some of it's down to maybe the skin. Yeah, and some of it's obviously down to how it's taken care of, you know. Mm. Once it's left the studio, mate, we don't know what we don't know what they're doing with it. Yeah, we've just got to give them the best advice and yeah. do it to the best yeah. of our ability. But it is also it's a joint effort, you know. For I think sure, people mate. think like it's a collaboration, isn't it? Like, yeah, of course it is. I always say to clients, like, mate, it's not done until it's fully healed. Mm. Like, it's great to do a beautiful piece on the day, but at the same time, it's like. I want to see it when it's healed and I'm like, yeah, I'm so proud of that. You know? Yeah. And they're obviously happy with it. And, you know, and, and like anything, you know, we could do a little touch up, do this, that and the next thing. But Yeah, exactly. And I'm more than happy yeah. to do that. What I can sometimes find frustrating though is when I maybe give some advice to a customer about a placement. Do you ever get this? And you say like, it would be better if we moved it somewhere else because <laughs> I know it's going to heal better or last longer there. Do you ever have an issue with that or do you, are your customers pretty easy going with placement? Oh, mate, I, I, obviously I have had it, but I feel like, see, recently, mate, I feel so fortunate and happy because, like, my clients are, every like, pretty much every single one is super sound. Mm. And, like, I was laughing with someone the other day because, like, with my stuff now, I think it's quite specific. Yeah. So they, I feel like they kind of know what they're getting when they come to me. And recently, no one's ever said, like, oh, can we do this or change it or don't like the design? And I did a collaboration with Jamie on Saturday. And I was like, it would have been so funny if the guy came in and he was like, I hate that. If the client was class. Mate. Okay. And I was like, thank goodness. It makes all, it makes all yeah, the difference, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I like doing a lot of cr- cross-body stuff. Yeah. So, like, stuff that maybe goes from the arm onto the, the torso, ribs. Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah, I that's saw like, that. my favourite thing to do, mate. Why is that? I don't know, because it's like utilising different spaces, isn't it? It's mm. like, you know what? I think as tattoo artists, where's your favourite place to tattoo? Forearm. In a forearm. In a forearm. Of course. It always is. Yeah. But it's like, I love it too. It is my favourite place because the skin's always good. Yeah. And the skin's always quite consistent, I think, with, with multiple yeah. people. But I don't know what it is, putting something on a top arm that goes onto the chest that's like, yeah. I really love that. Oh yeah, for, for sure. And like anyone who is an artist can appreciate then when a tattoo is done well on a difficult placement, yeah. you're like, fair enough. Yeah. If I see like a really clean sternum tattoo or a stomach tattoo, oh, mate, it's it's like, I know how hard that must have been to make that. Absolutely. Yeah. So like, I instantly really respect yeah. it. Um, when people come to you for big projects, like I'll sometimes find I'll save the forearm because I like, let's get the other bits done out of the way, yeah. do you know what I mean? And kind of, I can look forward to doing something like that. Yeah. Um, there's nothing worse though when someone comes here for like a piece and they've already had that bit done and it's like right and now I have, and you have to try and adapt your stuff and work around it. Mm-hmm. Um, are you quite like fussy and specific about placement? Will you tattoo something if someone's already got a tattoo by another artist in that area? Do you kind of get someone to maybe send you pictures of the yeah, placement? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to always. I I pretty much always get sent photos of the client of the area that we're gonna do. I'm not gonna lie, mate. I'm pretty fussy with when it comes to like. 
because some of my stuff that I do, it, it's kind of meant to be sat on its own. Mm. And I always try and speak with clients beforehand, like, are you going to build on this? What are you going to do around this? Because like, it's going to completely differ this, what we're doing today. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And nine times out of 10, they're like, no, 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 I won't build on it. And then of course, like two months later, they're like, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I, was on holiday, I was on holiday and I've got like a <laughs> yeah. little one. Yeah, yeah. It's always the way. Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nightmare that is. Yeah. That's a nightmare. But it is what it is. This is this is the thing and we can't do nothing about it. No, and like, at the end of the day, it's their body. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. grateful for them letting me tattoo them in the mm. first place. So like whether yes. they want to go do this and the next thing, yeah. quite frankly. It's just, oh, for fuck's sake. I can't like said, fuck, mate. Yeah. Who, who actually taught you? Like, what was your, give me, talk me through your kind of, your original, I don't think we've, I've kind of skipped so many different bits because I've just kind of got into We're talking to you. Chatting, but obviously yeah. you've, you've moved out, you said you moved to England. Yeah, yeah, so I moved to England when I was 19, I'm 24 now. Yeah. Um, and you started your apprenticeship here? No, 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 I started tattooing in Scotland. Okay. And it's weird, I, I never actually wanted to tattoo. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I've played golf all my life. Mm. And I was caddying at the time. They Scotland, to, yeah. The time, mate. All they do, is it? Do you know what I mean? Scottish golf yeah. and drink. There you go. But, um, yes, yeah, so the, the the town I grew up in, beautiful place. It's it's a has a really really famous golf course. So at the time I was caddying, and my mum's boyfriend came home with a realistic eye on the top of his arm. Okay. And I kid you not, mate. I grew up in a town of two thousand people, and creativity wise you're very limited like even like when i look back on it now like no one had tattoos me yeah. and if they did it was maybe a little one but it was like I, I was never exposed to that scene so to me it was like so far off my radar yeah i didn't have a clue about it but my mum's boyfriend at the time uh he came home with this realistic guy and i used to always do uh realistic graphite black like you know graphite pencil drugs. yeah just for fun or for with school? Or so I was doing sketching? it in school, but I was horrendous in school. I just did not like school whatsoever. I think like having that, you know, it's weird because we, me and you spoke about it. I love structure, but at the same time, mm. when it's like authority wise, I found it very, very difficult. Yeah, it I'm almost, sure you know how it is. Yeah, but it's man, like, it almost kills creativity a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and it's like, you know, they don't let you be your true self. And I was only, I think, the on my final years of school i left two years early but i was the only male in my art class and i was just like it's, it's just nothing nothing it didn't excite me do you know what mm. i mean and my art teacher lived three doors away from me too and she didn't really like me also so but um yeah he came home with that realistic eye and i was just like i was like this is class yeah and i never ever wanted tattoos so i never wanted to tattoo never wanted tattoos he came home with this realistic eye and i was like sit I said to him, I was like, ask the boy if he'll let me get tattooed. I, I was 16. So anyway, he asked him on his next session. He's like, nah, he won't do it. There can't have been that many tattoo studios. No, mate, do you know what's weird? So he was from Poland, yeah. Right. He grew up in Bournemouth and somehow ended up at the top of Scotland. So like, if you think of, obviously, you know where Bournemouth is. Yeah, oh, gotcha. Where I grew up, the... mate, it's, it's literally like, one end Land's of the country end to John O'Groats kind of style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on the other side of the UK. So I don't know how he ended up there. But anyway, he... I said to him, like, because I didn't know what I was going to do, mate. I was kind of like... I never really fitted in. You know, I was a bit of a... It was a bit of a riot. And I didn't know... I just had no direction in life what I to want to do. I was kind of like... You know, I was very creative. And I was academic to a degree, but probably not academic enough to then pursue mm. further education, you know. Um, so anyway, I said to him, I was like, oh... See if you give me an apprenticeship. Because I thought, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, if I get an apprenticeship, he's going to tattoo me. So that's how I was thinking. Bef okay, so you were thinking that way before you'd even had a tattoo off him. Yeah, mate, yeah. Fine. I didn't want a tattoo. I just want, I didn't want to tattoo. I wanted a tattoo. So I thought, if I get an apprenticeship, I can finesse the guy and <laughs> get a tattoo and then okay. fuck off, probably. That's mad. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. like, That was my mentality. I was always thinking, how can I do this and that and the next thing? So anyway... <laughs> Put my, got some, it's mad actually to think, but I actually got like a really nice folder and put all my drawings together. I used to draw a lot of birds and um, like animals, anything with textures, mm. 
you know, any of that I really enjoyed. So yeah, give him a folder and he's like, yeah, I'll give you an apprenticeship. And uh, I was like, right, let's go. So at the time I was caddying, like carrying people's golf bags, yeah. making a little bit of money off that. And you know, a lot of people, I don't know, what, what was your apprenticeship like? I had it easy, mate, I'm not gonna lie. Not easy, but I was tattooing after two months. Fair. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That, and I don't speak to the guy that taught me and I don't really agree with how he is as a person. Mm -hmm. But one thing I'll say is like, the guy threw me in the deep end. Fine. Do you know what I mean? And I'll always be grateful for him doing Was he good bit. at tattooing? He, yeah, he is good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he still tattoos now? He still tattoos, yeah. He he actually lives in Los Angeles. Uh, he lives in California, I think. Fine. I don't keep in touch with him because you know how it is. Yeah, 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 of course. And I'm not going to bad mouth him, but because I'm grateful for what he did for me. Do you know what I mean? I always remember when you yeah. know, little things like that, like he got me going and he literally just like, you want a tattoo? Two months. He knew I could drew. I, you know, I could draw at high level from, from a kid. Fine. And he's like, there you go then, mate, crack on. Yeah. And um, so he's thrown me in and then he left. So this is a town 20 minutes from where I grew up. He left and at the time I had literally just got a little um, bungalow Okay. And um, he left. At what, at six, what were you, 16, 17? 17 I was, yeah. Okay, so you're moving out so now. I moved out, left school, left school, moved out, yeah. started tattooing, cardding a little bit on the side, and then uh, moved into the town close to where he was because at the time I couldn't drive. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then he left mm. into to a, a, a city called Inverness. Okay. And um, he left, and we kept in touch a little bit. And obviously, my mum at the time is fucking stressing, mate. She's like, y you've left school, your grades are fucking shite. Mm. Like, what are you going to do? Do you know what I mean? I was a bit of a riot. I'm here, there, and everywhere. And I said, I was like, listen, listen, we'll just give this tattooing thing a go, and we'll see what happens. Okay. So anyway, I was tattooing, and it's mad to think about it now, but I was tattooing in this bungalow, and it was in this little estate where... I don't know how you what you'd call it, but maybe where like homeless would stay, and like you know junkies would stay. Okay. That, you know that you put a like bad, squats. Not squats, but you put a bad bunch into a little area, and it was quite. It was quite. It wasn't and then too. They'd really left to it. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You know, so I'm in a monk's there, seventeen, and okay. I've got people coming in every day getting tattooed, and it was just mad. Like fine. to look back in it, and like the living room was tiny. Yeah. And I'm just sitting in there, and I, I was tattooing until two, three in the morning sometimes, mate, just churning out. I did that for a year and a half. What was your, to work that long, that, that amount of hours, What what's your motivation there to do that? Mate, I honestly... Was it the money? Were you making good money? I've always been money motivated, but at the same time, like, I just... Ev where I grew up, everywhere, everyone knew me. And in my head, like, what is worse than a bad tattoo artist? Mm. There's nothing, mate. To me, anyway. Yeah, so that I reputation, to, yeah. You know, to be honest, mate, it's weird because like, I, I regard myself as quite a confident person, but I still, every day, do get nervous doing a tattoo. Yeah. And, and I think it's a good thing because it's like, it shows you care, for starters, and it's like, you know, it keeps that, keeps that fire in your belly, do you know what I mean? Like, every day I'm going into it and I'm like, like, we need to, I'm constantly trying to prove prove to myself do you know what i mean like 100 percent. and it's the moment oh, you couldn't... come complacent with it that's when you're gonna you're gonna slip up you know yeah i can't imagine going into a day of work and just like banging something on someone it, it just would never happen i nah. just can't even Maybe contemplate too that much care towards it you know of course because it's like it's your name like you said like exactly. it's reputation my name's on that work i exactly. don't want you could spend years building up a good reputation. It yeah. takes one shit tattoo yeah. or like one piece of really yeah. bad customer service and, you know. That's it. And it's, you know, and it's on someone for life. And I'm always very grateful of clients giving me the opportunity to create something for them, especially when it's in my style, because it's a bit, you know, some, some of the stuff can be a little bit strange, like we not in a, in a good way, weird. But, you know, like they're giving me like two free body parts and I'm putting satin over it. It's mm. like... It's a massive trust thing, you know? Yeah. But the... Where, where were we? What else were we saying? No, so we're talking about you were tattooing in your bungalow then, Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And then it's weird, mate, because the lad that left to move into the city, this is how I ended up in England. Like, my whole career, mate, I've met people and it's somehow I've just gotten mad lucky. 
I yeah. think it's like the harder you, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah, and I've well, always stuck by that, mate. Because like, it's probability. Yeah. Absolutely, mate. You know, it's if and, you're up till three o'clock in the morning, tattooing, networking, yeah. chatting to people, yeah. then your likelihood and the percentage yeah. of you meeting someone that's yeah, going to yeah, sure. of course. If you're in bed all day, you're not going to be looking. It, mate, you know. Yeah. And he, so I was tattooing him for a year and I think roughly a year and a half in that bungalow. Mad times in there. It was fun. And um, he messaged me one day, his name, his name is Bart, and he messaged me, he's like, oh, I've got a guest spot in Worcester, do you want to come down? Ah, okay. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I'll come with you. At the end of the day, I didn't really have a job. I was on, you know, like universal credit. Yeah. So like they were paying for my house, they were paying for my food. Obviously, they didn't know you were tattooing, tattooing on the side. Fine, slide. okay, so it's all cash. That's yeah. my weekend money. And you're um, how old at this point? I'm, s I'm probably 18 at this point. Okay, how 18. old are you now? I'm 24. Okay. Yeah, 18 at this point. And then um, he's like, oh, do you want to come down? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. So anyway, I parked my, st he had the guest spot. I parked my stuff. Because this is the way I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm taking my shit with me. Because mm. I, 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 I was going to move south of France because I have a friend out there that tattoos. I've guested there since, since I was probably 17. And then I wanted to go to London. But it's just weird how things work out. It's like the right place, the right time, isn't mm. it? But he... He was like, yeah, guest spot in Worcester. Do you want to come down? I was like, yeah, sound. Parked my staff. I ended up doing two tattoos. And they were like, you know, I was 19 at the time. He was 25. Maybe he had kids. He had responsibilities. Uh -huh. Yeah. He had stuff set back home. He, he had stuff set up in Scotland. And they offered me a job. So I was like, right, let's go. So literally within the four weeks, lad, yeah. I cancelled my tenancy in Scotland. I parked my stuff up. I paid some lad, I think it was like 900 quid to take all my stuff to England. And then that was it. Mad. Yeah. And then I worked, I worked at a studio down there, down, um, down on the Tyvon for six months. I didn't get on with him at all. Why? <sighs> Just not a clash of personalities. Just a complete clash, mate. Like, I feel like in life, like, I've learned a lot from other people's mistakes. And I didn't like the way they operated, you know? They were they were rude to clients. They were just... Oh. They, they were just not good people, mate. Do you know mm. what I mean? And they were, you know, like we were saying earlier, you can be money motivated, but, you know, you can't let greed take over. No. Do you know what I mean? The minute greed takes over... You can become a different person, do you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, we need to look out for for each other and clients as yeah. opposed to being greedy, 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 you know? 100%. That is the most important. Yeah. The clients are the most yes. important thing you know? at the end of and the they, day. And they weren't treating other artists good. Mate, I was doing realistic portraits with an 11 round shader and a 13 mug because they're like, oh, yeah, we ain't buying tight freeze this week, boys. And then we were going across. It was the same as across the road. You know the little lip vaselines that, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, if you, yeah, you know, yeah. like, like lip balm, lip balm vaseline. Yeah. yeah, it's like the original blue one. Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't have vaseline in the studio. So you so buy we, them, and we were going to cross the Sainsbury's, paying two quid for these vaselines, and like they, you know, we were giving them a fifty-fifty cut. Fucking hell! But do you know what? For them mate, to not provide anything and yeah, treat. Yeah, but do you know what, mate? It's like I'm glad that happened because, like, at the end of the day. Like, you have your own studio, I have my own studio. You've probably gone through similar situations. Mm. We know how to treat people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, like, I, I want everyone that comes in here, whether it be a guest, a client, a resident artist, mate, you come in. You don't have to do anything. I'm, I've got you. I'll take care of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you have nothing to do. Yeah, I'll look you after know? you. 100%. I'll look after you. That, that, and that's, that's what it is. I don't take 50 cuts off people, but... You know, like, that's well within. Like, if you, you want to come in and work, at the end of the day, if you're an artist, mate, that's all you want to do. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're sheep and they're shepherds, and people people want to be just artists, yeah. then they deserve to be looked after and taken care of. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's why they're paying their cut or their rent on the chair. It's like... Yeah. No, know, for it's, sure. Like, it's a, it's a fine... It's a balance, isn't it? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. There's a balance between taking the piss and then, like... Mate. I'm fortunate to be in a position now where I've kind of like, I've ran and co-owned a studio and I've worked just as an artist in a studio and I've done guest spots and now I own my own studio. And I've had, I've, so I've had lessons. apprentices and I've got people come in and I, I understand like there is a level, you know what I mean? Running a studio, there's overheads, but then 
I want you know you're there to give like someone an opportunity and help. Like I've had a, I've had help out in the past, yeah. not necessarily financially, but just even getting into the industry. Yeah. And it's like I feel like it's my duty to help pass that on. Does that not excite you though, mate? Like Love it. Like I've, I absolutely love mate, it. I've I want more room now to be able to have more apprentices yeah. to give them the opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Like that's one thing that, that I've always wanted to look at though, mate, is like one thing that I really, really disagree on. And it's actually something I wanted to make sure I said to you, but like I feel that tattoo artists that are fu- like fully trained tattoo artists, they should either have a licensing licensing or some qualification that allows them to have an apprentice, mate. Because I believe it's not fair that some of these tattoo artists, mate, are basically using using these people that are coming up into the industry for two years free labor. Mm. It pisses me off, mate, because like. Mm. You know, that's two years of someone's life that they're putting into you in hope that you're going to give them your knowledge and understanding and experience, but they just see it as free labour. Are you talking about kind of um, not teaching them to tattoo? It's for... exp- it, mate, it's exploiting people. And I do know people even people, now mate. that and are doing that. I know people that. too, and if I see it, mate, I tell them to fuck off. Like, yeah. And if I know anyone that does it, I'm like, mate, you ain't have nothing to do with me because, like, yeah. you know, if someone can draw me, yeah, and they want to do it, get them tattooing. They ain't going to learn from shadowing you yeah. or shadowing so-and-so or doing this, that, and the next thing. Like, they need to just tattoo. Bop them on fake skin for a couple of months and mm. then let's go. Yeah. That's the whole beauty of it. It's like, I, I, it's like the one thing, it's like, I could go on a tangent about it, but I'm not. No, no, no. It and does I, my head. No, it's it. so good to see that you're passionate about it. Though. Yeah, for sure. And like, then nothing's regulated in tattooing. That's another thing that pisses me Which is why people take, like, that's why people take the piss. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, of course. Nothing's regulated. There's no, there's no apprentice schemes, you know a governing I mean? like, body or something like nothing that. Nothing at all, mate. If you, you know, you go on any gov website, it's like, it's not even taken seriously as an industry. No, well, look at COVID. Like, exactly. It was never even. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. It wasn't mentioned. Nah. It was like the beauty, and as we come on to beauty, close contact. I don't think the go- uh, we're not even I don't on. Even the, know art. What is it? Arts and entertainment. We're right? not under. I don't think we're on the government. Where like we're not on the radar at all. I mean, there's no tattooing. I can tell you that much. You know, there's no tattooing. Yeah, what, in, the- like HMRC. Yeah, Nothing yeah. like that, man. No, 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 it's, no, it's like, what is it? Beauty, arts, arts and creation, is it? Arts and enter- yeah, creation, yeah, beauty ish. But there's no tattooing, so it's like it's a joke. Yeah. Do that. That being said, then do we want there to be? Well, <laughs> well it's yeah, like as much as I talk about, I, I kind of like the fact that orthodox, yeah, I yeah. get it, I get it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the apprenticing that bugs me, mate. That's know? it, man. How how um I think we were originally talking about like um. So you're, you you said you kind of got into it quite quickly. I had quite a difficult apprenticeship in the fact that I stupidly went into the industry not knowing a huge amount about it, but okay. I just knew I then wanted to get into tattooing yeah, as yeah. like a way of expressing my art. Yeah. I probably did the wrong research, but maybe because there wasn't enough material about, and I ended up in like a very biker ran studio. Yeah. And I was like- Yeah, but the- that kind of brings us back to the point we've just said. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's not real any structure towards the industry whatsoever. No, definitely not on the educational side of stuff. No, and it's nice to see like, I, I see now there's a lot of people doing seminars for young people starting. When I was in Madrid, I was actually really surprised because the studio I was at, they had a room and they had like, I think it was like four girls and they're all practicing on fake skin and they're actually doing like an education system. Okay. Which is quality, I think, because you know then it's like, you know, it's done properly. They're going to learn good methods from the start. Yeah. And it's, yeah, okay, they, they, they probably pay a large amount of money to do it. But to me, that is more correct than so-and-so seen someone as two years free labor to clean the shop floors mate yeah yeah for sure do you know what i mean do you, like, so you've got apprentices do you charge your apprentices well they're, they're pretty much on they're all done now really fine. But i have i'm on my third one now. fine okay yeah she's literally just started right yeah. sweet and kind of do you like you obviously if someone was to come to you for an apprenticeship yeah what, what would be the criteria would you want to see what would you want to see from them so basically I have I have like a folder that we go through together. Mm. Um and again it is you know it's pretty basic. It, with 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 an apprenticeship I think it's very, it's obviously a very 50-50 collaboration in the sense of that they need to to be putting in the work. Yeah. And they need to 
I the one thing I always say to them is like stay curious. You know what I mean? Like you know when you're a kid and you're like, oh, how does this work? How do I do that? How can I do this? Asking questions. Like, asking questions all the time. It's like, and we're guilty now. We probably don't do it as much as we should. Uh, as much as we should. We need to stay curious. You know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe why it's so important to go on a guest spot. Yeah, I think so, mate. Because like, how long? Me and you've been both tattooing for years. Mm -hmm. We go on a guest spot. Oh, so and so does this like this. Oh, banging. I'm gonna go do that. Yeah. That's why I love it because it's like you're constantly learning. No one's ever going to know everything, are they? No. And do if you you're in mean, one like, studio on your own yeah, for the whole yeah. time, you're not going to learn yeah. anything. You're going to get stagnant. Both have pros and cons. Yeah. Um, both have pros and cons because like when I was on my own, going back in a conversation we had earlier, but when I was on my own, I, I tattooed on my own for a year and a half and I figured a lot of things out that was more me. Okay. So like when I lived in, so I actually rented a a room here mm. in Worcester before I got the studio. So I'd worked with all those boys that did the um, high contrast work. Yeah. And then when I worked on my own for a year and a half, that's when I started going smaller. Fine. Because you because was... I was on my own. Yeah. Okay. And I was going from my heart with what I thought. You maybe it's had me, those like you know? background, you kind of the knowledge, the background knowledge, yeah. but you could then implement yeah. that into stuff yeah, that you wanted yeah. to do. Mate, at the end of the day, like you know, you can put it all into into even if you do small fine line, but you've done contrast before, mm. that is going to give you an advantage when you come to do that because you have a strong understanding of of light and dark, obviously black to hold over time. You know? Yeah. Can you then? Be a tattoo artist if you're not already an artist in the first place. Can someone who maybe doesn't know how to draw, can they become a tattoo artist? Because that's a question that I get. And I get maybe people who come to me for a, for a tattoo who maybe aren't creative. And they say, like, could I get into tattooing? Mm, yeah, I think you have to have an eye for obviously design. And, mm. and it's weird because, like, before I would have said no. But then there's an artist that I follow in Denmark who works at, you know, Sinners Inc? Yeah. There's an artist. They're smashing and, it. Yeah, they're quality, mate. They're all really good. But there's an artist that worked there and he actually apprenticed there. And you know when people do that, ask me a question. And I was just reading the things and he couldn't draw. Okay. And he drew for, se I think roughly off the top of my head, mate, I could be wrong. But he drew for seven years and then apprenticed under Mark. Oh, you know, um, Mark was whatever his second name is. Uh, Volskara, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you know, he does. He's got his own style, and he an apprentice under him. So, like, I, I think, like, if you put your mind to it, of course, you can do anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 you, yeah. You know, you just need to. How much do you want it? How That's much it. you really want it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. So, how how did you kind of come about and find your? Have you, who have you got working here? Are they are they people who you've kind of taught up from the beginning? Have you got any sort of established artists that came to yeah, you to begin yeah. with? Yeah, yeah. So, Joe. Turner, he does really fine line. And then Jamie and Owen, I taught both of them. And then we have Lucy, who's just their new apprentice. Okay. And then we have pretty much a guest every week, two guests. Nice. And then two people on management, yeah. So where did um, where did your apprentices, where did they come from? How did you how So did one you of the boys them? I tattooed when I first moved to England. And it was just weird. It was just like, he said he wanted to tattoo. I was like, let's do it then. Yeah. And then the second, Jamie, he wrote an email. Mm. And at the time, I had an apprentice. Yeah. But you know when you just read something, uh, or an email, or how someone comes across, you can tell how much someone really wants it, you know? Oh, gotcha, completely, yeah. And it's like, you know, we saw his email. He sent in scanned images. He was actually studying fine art at the time. And he sent in scanned images of his work. And I was like, I was like t do you know what's mad? Is like, I feel like I see potential in people more so than myself you know okay like i see like you know some days it's foggy isn't it but when i see some people i'm like i think you could be amazing you know yeah. like i can see your career path just set out and you just yeah. go boom 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 100 percent. yeah you you can see that you can see the talent some people take a bit longer to get into it but you can always see that talent yeah. yeah you know um is tattooing then a natural talent do you think or can it be learned like I mean, it's like anything. It's like hard work. Yeah. It's talent, isn't it? Yeah. Especially if talent doesn't work hard. 100%, man. You know, it's like anything. You need to be willing to put those hours in. And... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to. Like, I think talent and luck plays a small part of it, like we said earlier. Yeah. But like... 
I Without like, the hours and the yeah. graft. And people, I don't think people quite realise. No chance, mate. If With people tattoo. knew how much, like, you or I put into it, yeah. then, yeah. The thing is, is, as you know, mate, it's not, you finish at five or whenever you finish, six, seven, eight, nine, but you go home mm. and you're doing a design or you're doing this, that, and the next thing. It's like, it's a constant. And you have your own business, mate. Yeah. So it is 24-7. That's it, man. You, you, you find yourself drawing then every night. Yeah, I'm always designing or doing satin or, yeah. yeah, you know, that's why, yeah, you know, when I do satin, I, when I go away or or go out, I enjoy myself because it's like, it's intense, mate. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, you have to have that release. 100%. Well, you know? what is it then? How do you find that? How do you strike that balance? What's your release from work? you know work? what though, mate, Alex? Honestly, me, I'm the worst person to ask for balance. Eh? Right. I'm the most overindulgent person you'll ever meet. Like, I'll, I'll focus on work for Life's for living though, isn't it, months. you know? I'll work, I'll not do anything, I'll have no social life, and then boom, you know, I'll go do something, and that's me, then I'm all over the place. But, you know, it's, 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 that's the enjoyment of it, do you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. And I will get better at balance as I get older, you know? Yeah. But <laughs> if it works for you, it works for it you. It does work for me. I, I, make don't, it work. I don't think I've got enough balance, to be fair. Do you I know what? I think work. one of the biggest problems for me is the fact that, like, if, I always look for the next thing. It's because you've and got that entrepreneur mind, though. I guess so. And, like, I'm grateful for that because it's helped get me to where I am. Absolutely. But if you don't ever enjoy the present, for then, sure, like, you need to. I get to a point where I'm like, right, there's the goal, achieved it. Yeah. Right, now we're on to the next goal, achieved it. And yeah. it's like, I don't ever find that time. I remember when I was back in my early 20s and I was 29. What age are you? 29 I was last week. 29 last 29 week? 29 last week. Like I don't you're know saying that like you're like fucking 50. 50, that's what I feel back like. Back in the day, man. No, 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 not even. But like I get to the, you get to the point where like, I don't know where those last four or five years went. Obviously I've got stuff to show for it, but like for I sure. didn't stop at any point and just enjoy it. Um, that's and I find that, that's I find it so hard. Yeah. It's important to do that, you know. I find it so hard to get that balance. It's, do you know what I mean? It's one of the most difficult things to it do. It is hard. And do you know what, mate? I think everyone struggles with it. Mm. Do you know? And, like, with what you were saying, with, like, obviously both kind of entrepreneur mind, we're lucky that we kind of have the freedom to to enjoy ourselves as well, you know? Yeah. It doesn't need to just be work, 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 work. Yeah, man. Know? I never actually knew. No, it does though, doesn't it? Really? Of course it does. Yeah. yeah. But you need to just like, you need to, you know, you need to enjoy yourself. And mm. what's the point in working all the time if you can't in, in reap the benefits? 100%. Rewards, you know? What's your vision then? What's what, the end goal? What's your vision? What's the end goal? Because if you are of that entrepreneurial mindset, then you must be having, you must have some short term goals and you must have some long term goals. Yeah, of course, mate. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, even though this is a tattooing podcast. I don't want to tattoo forever, mate. Yeah, fair. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I have a lot with my design mind in fashion, anything, you know. I, that's that's another reason why I'm thinking I would maybe like to go to London because the opportunities would be so much higher. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, like, set up. Obviously, I love tattooing, and I'm always going to have respect for it because it's got me to where I am today. I'm fortunate enough that I can travel the world yeah. and tattoo people and meet great people and have great clients. But it's like... There's more to life, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not, I ain't, I ain't gonna be one of those 40 year old tattoo artists, mate. I just ain't. Yeah. It's not me. It's a weird I'm gonna when be retired with tattooing by the time I'm 30. <laughs> yeah. We, I was actually having a chat with Benny um, on the way up here about this, and it's like, I will always probably tattoo, whether I'll be doing it full time. I don't, oh, because when you, it's so true when you say that 100%. like I'm not going to be 40 and tattoo and it's like I almost don't want to do that because I feel like you get to you reach oh, a peak mate, for sure don't you and mate, do I'm, one two a week yeah. on little, little bits and that yeah 100% yeah. there's so many other that, avenues that we can explore that's it do you know what I mean and it's what is like, that what's a, that avenue then fashion do you think would yeah, that be your thing yeah fashion what, or, get, like, what excites you then what is the thing it, and I've always been into interior I love property fashion yeah, anything like that. Yeah. yeah, where you can still be creative. Where you can still be creative. But, you know, like I said earlier, it's all just merged into one. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know, creativity, you can do anything with it, you know, and everything is a, is a medium itself, you know, interior, housing, fashion, 
tattooing yeah. this, that, it's like... Yeah. Well, you're smashing it, man. I love the way you've done the studio. Thank you, bro. Yeah, killed it. Like, I love the stuff. You, I think you mentioned you got someone, kind of, you've had someone help, like... Yeah, with... yeah, one of my mates, Jack. Yeah, he was actually a client. It's weird how you meet people along the way, isn't it? But yeah. I was kind of, when I got this place, I was like, oh... Did I... you know how you wanted it to look? Yeah, I had rough ideas, and I thought, I don't know who would actually do that. And then one day I was like, oh, yeah, I had this client from months ago. He he said he does something with Empire Cinemas. And I messaged him. He's like, yeah, let me come and a look. And then me and him met yeah. again after I tattooed him. And it was like, we just kicked off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The energy was there. And then he's like, I can do this, 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 this. Love that. You know, and I still speak to him all the time now. So Yeah, man. Bouncing ideas yeah. off people. It's cool. And do you think you'll kind of leave this here? Yeah, will you open? Sure, will yeah. you open another yeah, one? Definitely. When you move to London, is it going to be under yeah, the I same mean, I name? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gully, Gully. <laughs> you know, me and Gully were having dinner one night, and Gully was like, "Yeah." Gully said something to me that always stuck in my head. I actually spoke to him about this every week, but he's like, "He's like, who wants to work for a franchise?" Mm. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? I know obviously there is some franchise tattoo artists, tattoo studios out there. But... Do you know my biggest fear of franchising? Because people ask me this as well, like, would I ever do that? And it's like, it's the quality control. This is what I mean, mate. And How can like... you make sure that they are living up to the standards in which you want to set? Yeah, especially when you can't be there 24-7. No. You know what I mean? You're going to be here, there and everywhere. And could you quite, could you quite happily, like, walk off... And, and just kind of just enjoy the money or whatever, knowing that they are kind of probably ruining the vision that you had for the studio. Because I know that would happen. Yeah. I'm OCD. The thing, the thing is, though, is because you have your own business, yeah, you can't expect so-and-so to give 100%. No, of course. You have to accept, and myself, yeah. that they're going to give 80%. Because who's going to put... I can't, though. Who's going to put 100% into someone else's business? No one does. No one, yeah, yeah. No one course. does. Come yeah. on. That's just... That's facts. Yeah. This is what I mean. Like, you need to... You need to understand that it's like, I'm happy with 75, 80%. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they ain't going to give 100. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mad. It's a mad one to think it about. Is, it? It's good. It's interesting. It's fun, mate. I love it. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, I yeah. wouldn't have it any other way. No way. You tattooed AJ Tracy, didn't you? Yeah, I tattooed AJ. That was not long ago? Or no. a few years ago? Yeah, I don't know when it was. How did that come about? So I tattooed... So I tattooed jo uh, a friend of mine, Joey Bennett. He used to play for Villa. Yeah. Now he plays for... I think he's in Cardiff. Then... From Joy Bennett, I tattooed Mings. Okay. And then me and Mings, I've tattooed him quite Mings quite a lot. Me and him keep in touch. And then from that, then I tattooed AJ, yeah. Nice. I tattooed AJ maybe three or four times. Yeah. And he's there. Everyone's spot on. It's good lads. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, I think some artists kind of look at that and, and with, with, do you know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's respectable it's just to see like someone of that yeah. caliber coming to you for that work. Yeah. It says a lot Can about you. Yeah, of course, bro. We <laughs> if we stop, is it? No, no, no. Are you going to put this on YouTube, right? Here? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why? <laughs> I'm just wondering. Why? <laughs> <laughs>
and then they sort of spoke and then once they had spoke then it, it all kind of worked out fair so i did two it was quite hard because it was two cover-ups on his chest okay and it was two it was, portraits mm, so was that you going back to your roots then kind of doing that old black and gray stuff to be fair at that that point that was the kind of the transition between fine yeah and don't get me wrong mate i still have a lot of clients that i still have to finish stuff off for do you, know you just I mean? don't put that on your Insta. Yeah. Fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, at all. <laughs> no, no, and that's you I'm, know how it is. Oh, it? completely. We can get onto that to be fair, because I'd be quite what... interested to hear how it's Instagram is the most mm. fucking fake. Like it, it's a showcase, isn't it? And it's a showcase of everyone's life. I'm not saying yeah. that your stuff's fake. I'm just not saying that anyone else's is fake. But like you, you put only on see there. The good bits, man. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You only see the good bits. For the sure. The beauty of it though is like. I'm not massively into it. I think if it wasn't for business purposes, I probably wouldn't have it. But the thing that I'm so appreciative of it right now, because wherever I go on a guest spot, it allows me to be fully booked, you know? Mm. So I can't really slug it off because without Instagram, you know, we ain't going to be able to go here, there and everywhere. You you probably wouldn't be able. It would be harder for you to connect with other tattoo artists. Of course, I mean? mate. You can I've, just send a DM, and they're like, "Yeah, of course, let's do bro, it." I've got like I've got Instagram to thank for my business for sure. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Consistent hopefully. business is like eighty yeah. percent of my business is through Instagram. Of course, it is, and you would be foolish to to not put but it's and respect now. it. <laughs> yeah, to to actually it's have to be on it. Of course, you find. Gee, I don't know. If you, I say you find. I find. Um, when you haven't posted or like it eats away you're like fuck i've not posted in like two days and like i need to do something yeah. and i need to put that material up and blah 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 mm -hmm. it's killer man but i can see why like your it is a showcase of your stuff and it's what you want to do more of yeah um, absolutely but mate it's free advertising of your portfolio yeah there's not much else we can like you know it's, it's decent it's a great platform but you still find you doing that black and grey realism. So the cover-ups for AJ, it was like a Che Guevara, wasn't it? And... Che Guevara and Scarface, yeah. Nice. Yeah, really cool piece. Yeah, yeah. And then I did uh, The World Is Yours from the film. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Montana. And then, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so hard. To... Difficult. Hard, yeah. With the being a cover. It's like yeah. one of those pieces where, like, as well, you want to be able to kind of... Have you done some more stuff with him? I done no. I think that was it. I've done three or four sessions just to finish all that. Mm. I wanted to go over the cover up a little bit more, and then we were going to do some other. Uh, I think we we're going to do nineteen ninety four. I think he was born on his stomach. I I actually used to always do script as well. Oh, nice. So freehand script, yeah. So that was something that I, you know I'll still do it for my mates or or clients that I know. I used to do like free uh, freehand calligraphy. So where, did, of, where did that come from? Was that just like you've always done that? Yeah, I mean, like, my handwriting is relatively good. Fine. So it kind of just like... It makes sense. Yeah, you know okay. what I mean? It's just, like, it's just like my handwriting, but thicker with some flourishes. Like, See, I can't, so like... it came quite easy to me, you know? Yeah, I, I love doing freehand stuff, um, but, like, the actual script side of things, I think you have to understand the, the fundamentals of it. Yeah. I've had a lad who, on here, um, quite, quite earlier on in the podcast... Connor Pembroke, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's like originally a graffiti artist. So he's My like, mate, she's been tattooed by him actually, I think. Mm. Uh, he does like really nice. Really cool yeah, stuff yeah, and it's yeah, all yeah. freehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. It, it's like, I've actually got his work on the lower yeah, fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool, really, really cool. And a cool guy as well. But that script stuff, like, mad. Class, I, can, I can do freehand floral and I can add little freehand bits in here yeah. and there, but script is a different ball game. It is hard. Do yeah. you know I mean, it's something you've got to practice. And like you said, your mate, he's... He's got that graffiti background, so that that sort of flow of, is in his brain. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's ingrained in him. He knows how it is. You know. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, my, the one of my good uh, friends, Harris Johnson. He did. I don't know what side it's on. He did a script on the back of my neck. Yeah. But he was like, he actually doesn't tattoo anymore. But he was like, he's like one of the best at what he does. You know, mm. and he does like all that kind of like really nice calligraphy freehand. So I met him when I was 17 and that's kind of where that came from. He taught me how to, to draw it and then, you know, I, then I started tattooing it, so. Mm, mad. It was cool. Who are, you, who are your, like, top three then? If you could get a tattoo from anyone in the world right now, <laughs> top three. Do you know what, mate? There's obviously a lot of artists I look up, for, I look up to, but I'm actually not that bothered about it. Uh. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, 
this might sound ridiculous, but I'd rather get a tattoo by one of my mates and some famous artist. Yeah, fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's like, uh, there's a scenario and we're here and he's like, oh, you know what I mean? Like I've got my, pretty much my whole top leg is covered by mates and family and my mum's tattooed my leg. Oh, nice. I'd probably take that over getting a tattoo by some famous tattoo artist. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because I know, I don't know, it's just more the memory to me as opposed to like, oh yeah, I've got this by so-and-so. Yeah. That's okay. just the way my mentality yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, yeah. It's it depends whether you're like a collector or whether you're not. Like, oh, no, I've, of course. Of yeah. course, you know. Like I've, had, I've had, I've I've got my, all my left leg was all kind of stuff that I've taught. You know what I mean? I've like, yeah, I'm having my apprentices. Left leg is that. Left to shit that one. That left thigh, mate, gets it's a fucking beating. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, and the my, shin, yeah. blast of the shin. Mine's but has been absolutely hacked away. My mm. mate actually tattooed me not long ago and it is blown out to death, mate. Yeah. Honestly, and he's doing it, and I'm like, Pfft, that blood poisoning, this is killing me, mate. <laughs> you know, I, I mean? love it. Have you ever pre- have you like? Is that do you have that? But as part of the process, get your apprentices to kind of do a bit of tattooing on you. Nah, 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 not really. No, no. These are like these are my mates that don't tattoo. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My mates. It's like messy ones. Yeah, he's a joiner, and then you crack on, mate. <laughs> I love it though. No, nah, but the, one of the apprentices, well, he's not an apprentice now, really, but he's tattooed me twice. Mm. When, like, four months in and then seven months in, I reckon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. It's, um, that's another thing. I've never really understood the, you know, when, like, you have an apprentice and you make them tattoo yourself, mm. you make the apprentice tattoo themselves. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Like, I've never really agreed with it. Uh, I, don't, I don't see what the benefit is to someone. Like my one of my other apprentices, Lucy, she's not got one tattoo. Yeah. Like what benefit would she get in from giving herself some absolute horrendous tattoo? Because your first tattoo is always shite, isn't it? Let's be serious. Yeah, well, it depends, doesn't it? I guess so. It's not going to be to the level that you want it oh, to be at. Of course. No, 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 of course. I, on the flip side, I, I make my apprentices do that. You do, you do, yeah. I do, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's not like it's, it's opinion, isn't it? It's no, a difference in opinion, sure. and Everyone that's why like, we all teach differently. Um, but I can see where you're coming from. For me, it, obviously, there's an element of that's how I was taught. And secondly, I feel like tattooing yourself, you get an understanding of depth and how it looks and feels on the skin. Yeah. So I'll kind of have them do it on fake skin for a while. You know, just as well as I do, that even the real skin is nothing like real no, skin. No, of course. So you fake have to, skin's hard. Yeah, so you have to go on to someone fake first. Fake skin is hard. Of course. So I'll make them tattoo themselves and then tattoo me and then tattoo make friends and family. Okay, okay, okay. So that by the time they're on friends and family... There's like they're a little bit more relaxed yeah, and they yeah. understand the depth. You like you you understand and you can see and you can feel through your hands and through your own skin when you're in the right layer. Yeah, yeah. So kind of that's what I feel like. I gained a lot of experience from tattooing myself, mm-hmm. so I kind of get my apprentices see, to do I, that. No, I I completely appreciate what you're saying. I feel I was the opposite. Mm. I tattooed myself out of choice when I was seventeen, but. Did you not learn from that then? Nah, nah. Yeah, fair. Nah. That's why I've never ever done it because, like, I think mentally, like, like the the, I don't know if it's like the more neurons in your brain is like I'm lo- I'm doing it to myself, and I'm I'm not amazing at getting tattooed, but I'll swag it out, and at the same time when I was doing it, I was like, why am I doing this? Okay. And I never finished it because, like, in my brain, I'm like, this hurts. You're doing it to yourself, and I'm not doing it to that natural process that if I was doing it to someone else. So for me, I don't feel like it actually teaches you because like there's, I don't know, I guess it depends on the person you are, do you know what I mean? Of course. It's just, it's also the argument of like, I feel like, not because I'm a tattoo artist, I should just have a load of tattoos, but I want to have a level of empathy with the clients Mm -hmm. that I understand what they're going through. For sure. So I want to be tattooed in all different parts of my body. Yeah, absolutely. So that if a client, if I'm tattooing the back of someone's knee, and I know how fucking painful that is. I can understand when I'm doing it to yeah, them yeah. what they're going through. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if I'm not, I don't think you can be a tattoo artist or at least be an empathetic tattoo artist without any tattoos. I really, yeah, I hate. But t- there are tattoo artists who are very successful who haven't got any. You can be Absolutely. a tattoo artist and not have tattoos, yeah. but I think you offer that extra yeah. level of. I also hate that tattoo inside the things where people love giving clients pain, mate. 
Yeah, I, what, I don't even... I don't, I don't understand that. Do you know what I mean? I've worked with people in the past and they're like, yeah, my client's fucking struggling and they're loving it. And I think that's why I like what I do because like no one's ever uncomfortable. Yeah. Like how good is it? It's like to, for them, it's like they come here, they get a nice tattoo. It's like the, it's like the only time really that they can sit down and not do anything. Like yeah. you can't, you can't go and do work on here, there. Even when you've got a day off at home, you're still doing this, that, and the next thing, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah, of never course. really ch- sit down and relax. Whereas, like when you're here, it's like you can't go anywhere, man. Yeah, man. Just to give them that it. space and, and it's like, like some time. I think to... a lot of people, it's like it's a it's a pure therapy session. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, they're really enjoying it, and that's what I love about this. Like when I did bigger black and grey, it was a bit more. It's a bit harder on the skin. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like you, you know, you're maybe you're magging, 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 blacking things out, and obviously people get uncomfortable. The moment so- someone starts getting uncomfortable, I'm a soft lad, mate. I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's just call it a day. Yeah. Like I don't want to put, I don't want to someone to be sitting there like sweating. No, it's not like it's you want. It's not wanna... enjoyable for me, mate. Like. I agree. You know, I don't, I don't like that. I want them to have a good time, you know. And if it means booking them in for another session, then so be it. Let's do it. Yeah. That one hundred percent. I think there's a lot to be said for that. But no one's ever going to be like struggling with what we do, are they? Really? Not the delicate so. stuff, at least. <laughs> the, the worst is like a bit of single needle in it. Yeah. And even then, like twenty minutes in, they're yeah, kind of sound, they're into the groove. Yeah. yeah. How long do you kind of tend to work for at a time? Um, Your projects. You're like, I presume they must take you quite a while. Yeah, like a day, two days. Yeah. So do you like, do back to backs? Yeah, back to backs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, back to back. Oh, yeah, trying to get big. people kind of travel in, stay over in Worcester. Stay over, or when I go go away, they do back to backs as well. Fine, fair. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, and even on the second day, it's like, have you ever been tattooed for two days in a row? Yeah, three days in a row once. Me too. It, yeah. it's not that bad, though, is it? Mm, it will depend. The if third you had day, heavy... the third day's a bit shit. The, t- the first, the two days are calm. They're really okay. Yeah. I don't mind it at all. And if anything, I'd rather get it done like that. Yeah, yeah. Than like of healing, going back. Ty- right, I had thin. Tyler. Tyler Hill did all That's of my... So she did all my ribs and armpit, and then she did all of the back of that leg. Yeah. And you I your torso then as well? Yeah. Front and back, yeah. With that leg, I went in every Sunday for like six weeks in a row. And it was torture because it was like... Almost healing. Almost. And with the way she was doing it, that we could go back every week because she'd do a bit, then do the next bit, then do the next bit and kind of go back. So we were never going over stuff that was just starting to heal. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. And it was like, just as I got over it and like it was starting to flake and heal, it was like, right, you're back in again. <laughs> and it was like every fucking week. Every Sunday. And it's like, a part of me kind of thought what, like it almost might have been preferable to do like every day for six days than do like over six weeks. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. So it's like, probably not fully, fully recovered there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was probably worse. So yeah, like I would rather do back to backs, definitely. Yeah. When getting tattooed. When was the last time you got tattooed? And who by? Um, oh man, do you know what it was probably her at Brighton this year? Brighton Tattoo Convention. Oh, really got, I really got my I mean, armpit I finished. I, got, I wish I went to Brighton Convention. Now. It yeah, it was bang, good. It was nice. Bang. Yeah, it was good. It's, it's a good. cool vibe. I mean, it's like it's its own thing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Are you is that, are you a convention guy? I feel like you're either that way or not. Yeah, I'm down for it. Like I've been tattooed in London two or three times before yeah. it closed down. But I'd also just go just for the... Yeah, just for the networking and the bands, yeah. Yeah, Getting on it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, anywhere there's fucking a bar, he's there. Or a a debuff. (laughs) Yeah, that's it, man. (laughs) Fuck it, I'll tell you what, tattooing on it, I'd been out like, where had we been the night before? Don't even know. Oh, I'd been to Printworks the night before. You got Printworks? I was at Printworks, (laughs) got in early doors, and then I was at Brighton Tattoo Convention for 10 o'clock, and I had four and a half hours on my armpit. And it was, and there were people walking past, like looking around, looking over. I was, bro, my soul left you my just body. Said, yeah, don't, don't look at me. Yeah, don't, I'm just gonna lie. Like, it's like, I nodding the, off. I did the same thing. I'm mad as story. I'm like, yeah, I'm mad when I was at London Convention last time. And I was, I was out until, yeah, goodness knows when. And then I had to get tattooed the next day on my arm. Um, by a vano and I was just sitting there. I had a hoodie. I had sunglasses on. I had a hoodie pulled over my hood. Just sitting there, and just depressed, mate. I was like, "This is the worst thing." It's ever. like torture. If it you is, get in your mate. head, oh, that's it. 
Do you know what I mean? It's, it's all a mind world. game, which we spoke about before we started recording. It's a mind game. It's all like, it's all a mindset, isn't yeah. it? You know, talk to me about that artist then. So I saw obviously like earlier posts on your Instagram. You went and had some work done by Ivano. Ivano, yeah. Yeah, he started tattooing me when I was 19. And how did that happen? I just messaged him. So I followed him. Was he not based? Is he based in the States? No, he, well, he, yeah, he's in the States at the minute, but he has a resident. Sh- he has a studio called Thai Gallery in Naples, just okay. outside Naples. And yeah, because you've been all over the place, isn't it? What? You've been all over yeah, the place. Yeah, I've been all over, yeah. Yeah. And uh, always used to love his work. And then, yeah, literally, he said, he's like, oh, where I was, might have been 19 or 20. I think it was 19, actually. Mm. He's like, oh, I'm going to London. And I sent an email, you know, like a little email, and I'm thinking, oh, that he's never going to get a reply. I'm never going to get a reply. And then lo and behold, yeah, he's like, yeah, come to this apartment in London. I can't remember where in London it was. Pretty central, and he tattooed my hand. Nice. And then he did my hand in London. I did two days back to back in Naples. Then he did my inside arm in Naples, and then I think he did my top arm in London. So yeah, we just kind of like did it in between, in between the two. Over how long? A while. Nah, a year and a half. Oh, fine. Maybe okay. maybe less. Yeah. I was pretty fucking. I was pretty hungry for it, mate. To be honest. Yeah, but it's still not finished actually. Yeah, his work, his work, mad. Yeah. yeah. It works really cool. Yeah, he is good. He mm. is good. He's probably one of the best at what he does, isn't he? Like. Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. There's so many artists I want. There's a couple like yeah, the Daniel Silva and like yeah, Mr. Trochin, yeah, yeah. yeah Mr. Vatican, Trochin good. California. Yeah, he does all his by free, all free liner. Mm-hmm. Again, like that's someone that I like massively, but I can't understand how he does some of that stuff. Yeah, and like, I would yeah. love to get pieces, but like, you know, when you run out of space, and I'm like, I'd, I'd rather have given him like my whole back or like my whole leg or something. Yeah. It's like, it's weird, though, mate. Have you ever been tattooed by any of these those boys? No, nah. no. Nah. Why? Any order? That... I'm just like I'm a big believer. Don't meet your idols, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, this this is why probably my mentality is the way it is right now. Because like, you know, without it's not what it's crapped up to be. Nah, mate. I don't like you know. Well, yeah, I've got a sleeve by him, but there's more to it than that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'd rather. That's why I'd rather get tattooed by one of my mates. Do you know what I mean? Or Damien, the lad that tattooed me, I booked in for three days with him. A couple of months ago, he has a private studio on Bath, and uh, he's fucking one of the best people I've ever met. And we were going to do this back piece. He does mean him do similar work, but his is more black work and quite really nice abstract. Yeah. And like, the, my headspace, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want like a back piece of this, that, and the next thing. So he, me and him are on FaceTime every couple of days, and we're like, should we just do random shit? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. So like every day we'd go in, right? Let's do this. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. We chilled, we ate together, and it's like, I stayed with him and his family, and it was just like, it was just a beautiful three days, mm. you know what I mean? And to me, like, I prefer that than going getting tattooed by some famous guy that's... Oh, yeah, that's of course. No, I, I completely, I completely... The, I think, I guess it's just like, I just, res- I'm a bit of a tattoo nerd, bro, and like, I, 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 I respect I the work, Yeah. and I'm like... But the thing is, with me, I'm also a bit nerdy in the fact that I like collecting yeah, stuff. But d- it depends what they are as a person, though, mate. Completely. If they're not, and, and I, I've met. But a how lot do you of know? How people, are you meant to know that? And that's the thing. That's a risk you got to take. But I've met a lot of these people, and yeah, do you know what I mean? They're just people. They well, they are, but I don't like their energy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm big on that. I'd much rather get tattooed by someone that I actually have a connection with, even if they're. If they're not big, like I'd rather get tattooed by them than so and so that's like a big time artist. And a lot of the big time artists, mate, I don't think they give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just another person. Boom, 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 boom. See you later. So true. You know, and I come. I'm not. I'm not dealing with that. No, for sure. It's all about what you trying, what you want to get out of it. Yeah. Isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And but like also, it's an intimate and it's a thing. It's yeah, like there's a lot mate, of trust involved. It's experience. Do you know what I mean? Like you want to build a relationship with someone, but that being said, at the same time, you're always gonna learn. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. I learned a lot from getting tattooed by him. Yeah. You know, and a lot of things that has helped me throughout the years. And yeah, man. You know. Do you know what I really wanted to ask you as well? Is like, what have you had any career defining moments or 
maybe what a moment in your career that you would say, or even in your life that maybe something that you regret and you'd want to change? Regret or want to change? Yeah, you know, any reg- any big regrets? Like, is there anything any or, or or any any sort of any sort of pertinent moments in your career? Like any highlights? You know, I wouldn't say regret. I think like because I think we spoke about it earlier. I've always learned a lot from other people's mistakes, mm. but. I'm speaking more into the future now, but one thing that I don't want to regret is not trying loads of different aspects. You know what I mean? Like what we were saying earlier, like maybe moving to somewhere else or, you know, venturing in a different business strategy or, you know, I don't want to just stick at one thing. I want to keep, you know, keep challenging myself and keep doing different things. Yeah. You know, it's, I, but yeah, n- there's no like big regrets because anything that's gone wrong, I'm really grateful for it because it's like it's taught me a lot, you know. Mm. Yeah, for sure. You know? I think that's what you, you know, what I mean, life is all about. If anything, like I almost encourage failure because that's that's yeah. where you learn, yeah. isn't it? You know. <laughs> the industry itself, like, where can you see that headed? As in the tattoo industry. Yeah. I mean, it's evolving so much, isn't it? Yeah, man. And it's like, I don't... I don't know if you look at it in the last... I mean, you said earlier, if you look at it in the last five years, in the last ten years, I don't, I don't know how much more it can progress from what it is now. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, the, the industry itself is obviously... Everyone wants to get a really good tattoo. But not only that, I think people really nowadays are are basing it on the experience as well mm. do you know what i mean like the whole the whole vibe of like yeah yeah come in yeah sit down do 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 yeah see you later mate that's done that's gone now do you know what i mean it's yeah. there's so much more to it than that like you know we're offering an experience and i know and almost a friendship i'm sure you're exactly the same but a lot of people i tattoo i build a really good relationship with yeah and when you I, say I, that I, like, I'm, I'm close with them all do you know what i mean and it, and it makes it so much better man it's so good like i find it difficult to do that like i feel like moving forwards as the as we kind of say another five years ten years i think with instagram Look at things like Pinterest and TikTok. Clients have got this expectation of tattoos and tattoo artists. And it's like, I find it quite hard to maybe live up to that. Like, you know, if you're having an off day. And it's like you say... You know how it is with the photography. Do you know what I mean? Mate. Yeah, Don't it's like creating, creating the uh, like. I'm never happy with anything I'm producing anyway. Like, and and then trying to photograph that is crazy. You you're building this expectation. Clients are expecting a certain level of like, and I want to be able to provide that kind of personal mm-hmm. personal feel. But then, how the hell are you meant to achieve that when you're kind of tattooing two or three clients a day, six days a week, um, being in contact with those people and trying to form that relationship, like? whilst also still trying to keep your work at the level it needs to be like i don't know do you know what i mean like i don't i don't, I don't know how that where that's well, going to go thing, like how, how is, that's sustainable what, what we've got to what we've got to realize is obviously each client is going to have an expectation yeah but i feel like artists especially and clients are now understanding what they see on instagram is one thing yeah, yeah. do they know I, I mean, I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. That's like, that's like another thing I like about what me and you do is the sense of like, it's pretty raw. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like we're doing some fine line with a bit of realism. It can't really be tampered with that much, you know. But, you know, I, if you look at like colour artists or, or, or really surrealism black and grey artists or any of those boys that are doing like heavy, heavy work, at the end of the day, you can only do so much ink on skin. You can only do so much with ink on skin. Yeah. yeah. What you then do with it is going to take it to that level. You know what I mean? Some of these boys... So using, that's where it comes in with the construction and, and like, the composing the pieces yeah, of the yeah, photography. photography. You know, everything's photography, mate. You know, like, 
It's the aesthetic I, of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I take my time with it and I'm, you know, because I want, you do a tattoo, yeah? And you're happy with it. You take a photo with your iPhone, boom, post it on, yeah? That's fine. I don't think that shows the true representation of how it looks on the day. Yeah. That's why I'm quite, in, not intense, but anal with how I, I, I you know, I, I set up lights, I got a, a decent photography set up, but then mine's raw. Mm. Like mine is only giving the consumer how it is on the day, how we see it. But is it, yeah, yeah but that's it, it's how you... How we see it, that's all we can that, do. Though. That photo needs to look how, how you see it, you see it in day. your own head. Yeah. yeah. But then you've got a whole different level. Me and you don't need to do it because we don't do big realism, this, uh, you know, when it's a like color realism, color realism, like black and gray realism, surrealism, like these boys, mate, it's like, mate, that's not how it looks. So the, I've you, seen it in real life. A lot I've of... seen you do it in person. I've watched you do it. It ain't that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can do that. You it's can like heavily do that. saturated and edited. Mate, yeah, you know, it's mad. It's mm. mad what they're doing. Like, you know, it's not, uh, mate, let's be serious. It's not a fucking tattoo, is it? <laughs> yeah. It's and then not. is but then is that right, you know? Because then the clients and the customers have the expectation of receiving that. They book in, they go in, and they get the tattoo that day, and they come out with something that's not yeah. what they've seen on Instagram. I always get intrigued by. Uh, you've heard of that tattoo truth fairy, haven't you? Tattoo truth fairy. Yeah. Of like these well, boys. They compare and the, the, yeah, 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 it's mad, isn't it? But I always like, I always get surprised. It's like I wonder if clients go to these top artists and get the piece and I'm like and they're like oh wow it's like yeah it's not what it is in the photo because like I feel bad for clients mate because like me and you can see it and they've it. paid like a me fortune me and you can see it yeah. these guys have paid three three thousand maybe more and they they seem to think that they're gonna get what they see on Instagram which is completely fair enough to them because that's what they see and they have no knowledge on the industry mm. but it's like they must be mate, because like I ain't gonna say names, but I've seen um, tattooers work on there. That the image that's on there must have been provided from the client. How do you mean? So like, so they say they've got a piece from a big artist, yeah. Yeah. But that 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 photo is on Tattoo Truth Fairy, and the the client is taking the photo. So how oh, is that? Man. How is that page got the photo from the client? Yeah. The client is obviously not happy with what they've received. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You never see it. You know, like, you're here seeing like, the hints of this, but yeah, that's mad. It's mad, mate. You know, they ha how? What? You, unless Tattoo Drift, like, yeah, yeah, can you send us photos of the client's photos? <laughs> On the phone. It might be. Yeah. It might be the case, but <laughs> I'm like, well, they've obviously sent it across. You know, mm. but at the end of the day, everyone's doing their thing, and like, what works for work, what works for some people, yeah. Albeit, who cares? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There are so many tattoo artists now. I actually wrote a question down that I wanted to ask you about whether you thought that tattooing itself was quite saturated now, because I feel like it's only going to get more saturated if you mm. think it is. Um, and do I think it's saturated? Yeah, I do, mate, because I. Because I come from, so I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna go back onto the realism thing, yeah? So like, I used to obviously do big realism. Even when I was nine, like five years ago, mate, if you wanted to get a big realism piece, you'd have to go somewhere to get it. Mate, in every city or town you go to, someone can do realism, mate. Yeah. You're copying an image. Of course. And I'm not, dis I'm not, um, no, because there is a talent not, and a I'm skill not, in that. Of course there is talent because it, it takes a lot of skills, you know what I mean? Mm. And a lot of time and a lot of dedication, but, you know, like... Do you know what? Do you know what? Someone, I had someone on the podcast who said something, yeah, and it was controversial, but I think it's so true. And they say, like, Instagram likes off of black and grey realism artists. And I feel it's almost... Who's the galley said that? No, no, no. I can't, <laughs> even, I can't say who said that. But it's like, it's almost as Did if... Did you take it off the thing? No, nah, it's on there. It's on there. <laughs> no, because I fully and I fully. David Beckham paved the way for us. <laughs> you know that. It's almost, and I'm not slagging anyone off, but like people who aren't creative. Do black and grey realism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh man. No, um, it's like, that's the stuff where like, if your tattoo doesn't look like the real thing, it's not impressive to non-creatives. Do you know what I mean? Okay, okay, okay. As in yeah. like the but, stuff, but, I find but. the stuff that looks more real does better. Yeah, but mate, I, I mean, I, I don't know statistics on this, but clients, mate, also want quantity over quality. You know, there's like people out there that'll do an arm sleeve in two hours, like not, not maybe not two hours, yeah. but they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I got my whole outside of my arm down four and a half hours. Full sleeve in a day, full I'm sleeve like, in oh, a day, yeah. I'm like, okay, mate, that sounds like, do you know what I mean? Like this, what 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 do you want me to say? Well, there's no detail Or a back in piece in 16 hours. I'm like, that is, I don't know, maybe I'm old school mentality, mate, but like, you can't do that. Not with the, t not with, because I want, if this stuff has not got detail in, it's not worth having, in my opinion. The, exactly, but also like, how can you do that back piece in 16 hours, mate? <laughs> Come on. You can't. You can't. You can't, you just can't. I'm seeing lads like, boshing out a whole outside leg in like four hours, I'm like, Fucking hell, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, each piece is like... <laughs> I'm intrigued this. you said that, but the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> it weren't golly, it weren't golly. I'll have to go look. Yeah, but like, and I, and I fully, I fully, fully agree. The only other thing that I want to ask you, just from a, like a selfish point of view, is I really, looking at your stuff, it does blow my mind. And I can't understand, like, well, what I want to understand from you is, first of all, where you source your imagery from mm -hmm. to create those pieces and what software you're using, how you're putting them together. Mm -hmm. Are you Procreate? Are you Photoshop? Yeah, Procreate. Where both, are you... both, actually, both, both, both. Yeah? yeah. And, and where are you sourcing the stuff from? And how, how do you kind of go about, like, actually mocking that thing up and, and creating that? Like, is it all just winging it off the top of your head? Give me an example of what... Because um, obviously each piece is totally different, do you know what I mean? Like... So, for instance, like... Okay, hold on a second. We'll, we'll, I'll let this keep this rolling. Yeah, keep it but rolling. But I'm going to dig up your Insta and I'm going to find one of yours now that we can talk about. Um, because... Hold on, I'm going to catch you out with this one. I'm intrigued to what one you're going to show me. Okay. I'm not going to show you, I'm going to tell you. Are you going to tell me? <laughs> Um, okay, sweet. Yeah, that's quite a good one, actually, because that's quite a tricky placement, this one. Okay, I never thought you'd show me that one. Yeah, I want to I want to ask you about that one. Yeah, so what... So, obviously, with the placement with where it is, like the inner bicep's quite flat anyway, but then going out onto the arm and having where that's going to bend is quite challenging anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially over the inner... In a, bite, yeah, in, a, yeah. in a in a in arm, like where did you come up with the kind of concept, and how did you put that together? It's obviously quite linear and quite long. Yeah. Compared to something, say like you know where you talked about like that one, what, for example, where I you're love kind of that piece, man. where you're kind of getting it to work from over the back. What yeah. I can do is I'll kind of overdub these photos onto there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, send, 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 send. So you've got like almost like, like a woman with a flamingo, flamingo head. Flamingo, mate. Yeah. So, talk me through it. So the, what, well, the woman flamingo, I had a cancellation and she's literally like, I want a flamingo, do whatever. That was the only brief, was it? Yeah, I, want yeah, a I want a flamingo. And she actually, the, the, the only time, this is the only time a client's actually done that, but she sent me her Pinterest feed and it was just like loads of random bits on Pinterest. I was like, this is class. Like, okay. I might get every client to do this. And so she sent me the Pinterest feed but the thing is, is when I did that piece, I had the cancellation, yeah? Mm. And I wanted to do that composition. So, like, going around the crease from the... So you had that placement in mind? I had the placement in mind, because, th to be honest, that's how I do it, mate. I don't... I'm not really... I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm not bothered about the design, but, like... I'm more intrigued and excited by the actual placement. Like, uh, having that okay. circle around the... The, the armpit crease, you could say. Yeah. And then she's like, flamingo. She's like, I like feminine. I was like, boom, boom, flamingo woman. Let's go do it that way. And then the other one, what was the other one? The other one was the light bulb going down onto the eye, onto the inner forearm from the inner bicep. Shattered light bulb. Yeah, so that has a... Let me just... That, that has a black hole galaxy coming out of the light. I don't know if you can see Oh, and the, and the fucking teacup on the ribs. 
that's I love that one, mate. I like that. Yeah. He was cool, man. He that was, was actually that was one of the ones which I mean. He was one of my clients from Brighton. He so mate, that's actually really cool. That's the best one to mention because his mum, I think his mum passed away, and she used to always just sit on a chair drinking coffee. Yeah? Like that was her like that was her like happy moment. Do you know what I mean? Sitting on a chair, chilling, having a coffee, and then. Um, it was one of those designs, like, I think sometimes I get a bit too much in my head because I'm quite an overthinker. And I was like, when it's so deep, I'm like, mate, you need, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, Lou, you need to pull something at the bag here because, like, you know, he's coming from Brighton. He's, he's got this really great idea. And I'm like, I need to, I need to do something special for him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I did the, the woman balancing on the chair. And then... There's he, separate elements all stenciled in. How do you mean? So like, the no. teacups are stencil. So, so so we weren't supposed to do the teacup. He we were gonna do coffee beans coming out of the top of it, and I on the day I said to coffee myself, cup rather not teacup. Yeah, yeah, sorry, co- yeah. No no no. So yeah, we were gonna do coffee beans coming out, and then I said to him, I was like, would you let me tattoo your ribs? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, right. How don't we do a, f- a small figure of you walking into the new, the teacup as like going up the stairs almost to like a like a heavenly stairs mm. and he's like yeah let's do it so that that's why i was saying to you earlier it was like like i love sitting down with clients because i like, you know two minds are better than one like he he said the coffee cup i was playing with the beans idea because we had to link that in with his with his mum obviously and then he's like he's like yeah do you want to do the ribs i was like yeah let's do it so done and the, the reason i started doing that um transition from different body parts was a was another client from brighton she wanted sitting on her ribs that came across her arm mm. and i'm like oh i don't know how this is gonna work so i put the piece in her ribs and then i put a piece on her back with her like, just like rest and relaxed and... yeah yeah and then i stuck a line from from here across here and that's how it, i was like oh, i was like this is so cool and it actually works. yeah it was her idea it wasn't my idea it's weird how that stuff works yeah, isn't it? Mate, it wasn't my idea well you're like you don't see that often and it make, really makes your stuff stand out yeah. do you know what i mean now now, now i want to do that all the time though yeah like at the time it wasn't because i i don't know if i've seen it maybe i have but like i've not i don't know many people though. No way. You know. And it, that really, is that not the core and the essence of tattooing? Is it's not, I like your approach, is that it's actually less about the piece and more about the placement. Yeah. Because it's not just a painting or a canvas. Yeah. It's meant to work with the well, body. The thing is, is like you need to complement beauty with it. Do you know what I mean? It needs to fit the pa- the, the place. If you're, you could do the exact same piece in a male and a female, <laughs> But it, it wouldn't work as good, you know what I mean? You'd need to complement the, the space and obviously every body type's different. Yeah, like. man. No, I love it. I think you're absolutely smashing it. Thank you, brother. Do you know what I love about and why I needed to get down to you is because I think you're a visionary mm-hmm. and I think your work really does speak for itself. I think it's so good to hear how you are trying to push the boundaries of that and you just think a little bit different mm. and I really respect that, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate um, it. Yeah, it's been so good to have a chat with you today. Like, I really enjoyed it. And I've learned a lot as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to kind of continue to check your stuff out. I need to get a piece by you yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll have do to it right sort- now if you want. Yeah, fucking do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, honestly, just keep doing what you're doing and Thank keep you, pushing man. the boundaries, yeah. man. Because, uh, you know I mean, I can really see like see where, yeah, yeah. where you're going to head and like the possibilities are endless, yeah. man. And I'm grateful for being on it, mate. Thank no, you. I love it. Thank, Thank you. For, honestly, yeah, thank you for joining me, man. Um, so let's wrap it up oh, with, <laughs> with leaving a question for the next guest. If the you can, question. Yeah. I did think of something. Obviously, you said not all of them are tattoo related, but I, I will make it tattoo related. But I was just thinking, if you could tattoo in any venue, whether it be inside or outside, where would it be? Any venue. Any venue. Any venue you want. Okay. And why? Which is interesting, isn't it? Where would you choose? To tattoo. Yeah. If you could tattoo in any venue in the world. Somewhere where it's not been done, probably. Well, this is it. Where yeah. has it not been done? I don't know. The I've Vatican. Been... The Vatican would be quite cool. The Vatican. Yeah. Can't you know check I mean? you imagine. That would be... I don't know if anyone's tattooed in there or not. No, fuck moves. I or like, I want... Like Del said, he would be the first person to tattoo on Mars. On Mars? Is that yeah, what he yeah, said? Yeah, yeah, Could Did you, he say that at the end? Did, yeah, yeah. Well, he didn't ask the same question. No, not at the end. That wasn't a question. But uh-huh. we were speaking about like places to tattoo okay 
And it was where, like, where would you can you imagine doing a tattoo on Mars? And I was like, what the fuck? Um, where would I tattoo? God, you've got me on the spot now. Somewhere crazy. Somewhere like, I, I mean, I'd love to tattoo on a plane. That was my kind of like... Can you imagine like being flown somewhere no, like on a private, private jet, jet and it, fucking right? tattooing on a private jet? Or like... I don't know, man. As long as I'm tattooing, I'm happy. Do you know what I mean? It can be yeah, fucking anywhere. Yeah, underwater. Is that possible? Underwater, <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that Jackass episode where he's tattooing on the back of like the moving... Is it on a quad bike or like on the back no, of a truck? Man. I mean, oh, bro, I'll have to think that out. Film, it's not, that's an old one. Is it's either Jackass old. or it's like, um, what was the other? Dirty scene? Sanchez. Dirty Sanchez, I think, I think it was. I think it's Dirty Sanchez. Maybe. Uh, no, was it Steve-O? I think it was. Is it? He's had a coil machine like on his back trying to do a smiley bandies. face. <laughs> and it's fucked Oh, up. no, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, sweet. Love that question. And I'll open that on the next one with it for what the next one. What do you reckon? Test. Is it a shite question? No, I love it. It's good. Uh, what, did, what did we say earlier? I feel like, we, how long have we been doing this for? Fucking hell, I don't know. Hour and 40 odd. Is it? Hour and How long has that been? About an hour. Oh, fucking it's hell. It's good. Perfect. Cool. Me and you I've chat. enjoyed it, man. Legend, brother. Yeah, yeah. Chat. Obviously, thank you for being on it, man. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast this week. Don't forget to hit the bell icon and the follow button to be notified of every new release wherever you listen to your podcasts. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on YouTube as well. I'm Alex Lloyd, and this is a 21st Century Tattoo. Thanks for listening.